Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with our player character and we are actually going to be getting this player character in the game in today's video. So in the last video we set up the blend space for our character to get them moving left, right, forwards, backwards and all that good stuff and in today's video I'm going to be going over the blueprints required to actually set up the direction and the speed of the character and then to match the blend space to it. There's a lot for us to do so hold on tight and just follow along. So first things first what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my animation blueprint for this character and inside of this we've got to do a couple of things. The most important being setting up the conditioning and everything like that for the speed and the direction. But before we can do any of that we actually need to create some variables for direction and speed so the engine knows exactly what we're talking about. So when we created our blend space and put it in here you can see we've got our direction and speed on our graph. We just need to link this up to a variable of our own that we can then set and then obviously um, change the speed and the direction of. So what I'm going to do is grab my direction and speed and simply promote both of these to variables. And I'm just going to leave the name that they've got at the moment. So that's going to be direction for that one. And then for the second one, once again, we're simply just going to call this speed. And I'm going to drag this out to make it look a little bit cleaner, just like that. Now that I've done this, I actually need to go into the event graph for my blueprint now and actually tell the engine what the player's speed and direction is. So what I need to do then is from my event blueprint update animation, inside of my main blueprint, I need to now create a sequence node. Once again, the reason why I'm using the sequence node um, instead of going straight to the character stuff is because in case I want to add additional stuff later on, I can just use this sequence and add then one, then two, and so on. But going from then zero, just go ahead and cast to our character for now. And then with the object wildcard, just go ahead and set that to try get pawn owner. And then just drop it in there. And now, now that we've cast to the character, we can actually communicate with it and we can get like the velocity and we can also calculate the direction of the speed of the, uh, the direction and the speed of the player. And the way that we're going to be doing this is by getting a reference to this pawn and then getting the velocity. So drag that out and type in velocity, uh, V-O-L-I-T-Z, so get velocity. And the second one that we're after is going to be get rotation and that's just get actor rotation. And now what we need to do is feed this into a few mathematical blueprint nodes. It's really simple to do. So what I'm going to do is drag out cast to character and I'm going to add um, calculate direction in there. And this is going to allow us to calculate the direction of our player using the velocity and the rotation, the two things that we've got here. And then we're simply just going to feed this into our direction variable that we created later on. So let's go ahead and add the base rotation in there and the velocity in there and it really is as simple as that. And now for the return value, I'm just gonna simply drag this out and type in set direction and that's all good. And now we've got our direction variable set up. So now when the player is gonna be moving along, the engine's gonna know which direction they're heading in and of course that's already being fed into our blend space with the blueprints that we created earlier, you know, the variables. So moving on, we next need to get the velocity. The velocity is very similar to speed. All we've got to do is one little change to get that. And that's simply going to be add vector length squared onto there. And then with this, all we're gonna do now that it's a float value, I'm gonna drag this out and just simply type in set speed. And once we've done that, just hook it up to the end of set direction and make sure everything's all linked up and that all looks good to me. So if I go ahead and compile this now, we don't have any issues. The only issue we've got at the moment is sort of our transitional stuff. So walk to running, running to idle and all that good stuff. I'll show you how to set up that now. So if we go over to our state machine, you can see that we've got our idle and our walk and running. But the thing is, at the moment, the engine doesn't really know when to go from one state to another. And the easiest way that we can do this is by actually setting up some conditioning for the speed. So basically for the idle, we only want it to idle if they are not moving at all. And we only want it to be in the walk and running state if they are moving. So we're going to be using some conditioning to check the speed of the character and see whether or not it's above or less than a certain value. It's really simple to do. So for the idle to walk and running conditioning, just double click that to open it up. And then what we're going to do 
is simply drag this out and we are going to be checking to see whether or not the float is greater than or equal to because we want to make sure it's greater than a very small value like 10 um, the maximum being 600 if it is it's going to start getting the player to move you can set this lower like five or or even one it's entirely up to you but i do like to have a little bit of leeway so now for this variable all we're going to do is to drop speed in there and that's it and now if the speed is greater than 10 it's going to enter into the um the walk and running state Moving on, now we've got to do the same for going back, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So go to speed, get a reference to that, and this time we want to check to see whether or not it is less than or equal to the value. Now we're using less than because it's already going to be at a higher value and we're just checking to see if it's gone below 100. Not below 100 but gone below 10 so just drop that in there and then just compile it and that is pretty much everything for our blueprint it's really as simple as that so what we need to do now is to actually get it into our character blueprint which is really really simple so we've got a character here open up your third person character for me it's this one here and then just open this up in the content browser if you can so find in content browser open it up and then from here all we've got to do is now just switch out the mesh and the animation blueprint. So go to your mesh in the details panel on the right hand side and then we're just selecting the character that we've created over the last few videos and for me that was the Eve character so Eve and you can see she's now come in here but she's a bit too small. So I need to scale this up and make sure she fits to the top of this little capsule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this up so if I can grab all of these at once because I want the scaling to be pretty much the same. And then I also advise that you turn off some of your snapping here as well, otherwise it can be a little bit odd. And I'm going to drop it in there. And then for the animation class, all I'm going to do is set this to Eve underscore BP, the one that we created earlier. And you can see that she has now magically sprung to life. She's sitting there and doing her idle animation because as of right now, the character isn't moving. So if we press play now, if we run into his, you can see we've now got our character. And if we move forwards, you can see she starts to move forwards. If we move backwards, she turns around and moves backwards and left and right. And that looks all good. So that is pretty much everything for our character setup. We still got to add in jumping and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff later on. But for now, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.